come back and be joined by Dale Dyke with the Sports Talk Show. State University's doctoral program in educational leadership plans to unlock our insights for graduate philosophy and graduate of education degrees. He offers financial assistance in the form of scholarship, fellowship, and assistantship. For more information, call 340-229-8809 or to apply www.aiaa.edu. Remember, excelling is your path to be a winner. Welcome back to the Don Oliver Acadome. Travis Jerome, Daryl Dapperich alongside with his starting lineups are about to be introduced. Daryl will give you Alabama A&M, and I'll give you Alabama State right after that. For Alabama A&M, they start at guard, a 6'5 senior from Kissimmee, Florida, at number zero, Jalen Reeder. At the forward, the guy that makes it all go for the Bulldogs, their leading scorer, their leading rebounder, the 6'7 senior from Albany, Georgia, number one, Andre Kennedy. At guard, a 5'11 sophomore from Harvest, Alabama, by way of transfer of Edward Waters University. Number two, Brandon Miller. At forward, a 6'8 junior from Huntsville, Alabama. Number 22, Jerron Sism. And starting at guard, 6'5 junior from Greensboro, Alabama. Number 34, Walter Jones, Jr., the head coach of Alabama A&M, Dylan. From Louisiana, 13.7 points, 2.5 rebounds, 2.3 assists per game. Reginald G. We'll get the start of the three. He's six foot three inch, 175 pound junior from Houston, Texas. 14.2 points, 4.6 rebounds a game. Is in the thousand point club now, with 1,035 points for his career. Ed Jones, the stretch forward, six foot eight inch, 215 pound senior from Atlanta, Georgia. 3.4 points, 0.8 rebounds a game. And Brandon Johnson, six foot eight inch, 205 pound redshirt junior from Garfield, Ohio. 4.5 points, 4.3 rebounds a game. Round out the starting lineup for Lewis Jackson. And Hornets again is Holston, Ross, G, Jones, and Johnson. And, Daryl, you heard Lewis Jackson talk about it in the pregame show. They're a better team when they share the basketball and you don't have one predominant score, even though he does rely on Reginald G and Jacoby Ross. He really does. I mean, obviously, G and Ross combined average about 28 points a game. But I'm going to tell you, to me, Travis, the key to this basketball game and getting Alabama State on a little bit of a mini winning streak here, A.J. Farrar has got to continue to play really well. He struggled in the loss last Saturday, came back and played really well Monday. We need A.J. Farrar to play well. He's a guy that gives you about five rebounds and nine points a game, and he comes off the bench. I think Farrar's going to have to have a big game, and we need to have Toby Owosho have a big game too. He can't disappear. He's got to give Coach Jackson significant minutes and instant offense when he comes off the bench. He's so electric, Travis, and he's so athletic. He really brings a lot of energy to the floor when he runs the open floor. Both of those are needed. If you get something out of Ferrar and a woe show, you get that distribution of the basketball you were talking about. The key to this game is going to be whose inside game shows up more potent today. you got Andre Kennedy from Alabama A&M. You heard it, Coach Lewis Jackson. Talk about him in the pregame show. He can explode for 30 at any time, but then he has games where he struggles. And then you got a guy that's Garen Sissom, 6'8", inch, that stretches the floor a little bit against guys like Brandon Johnson and Foster Petrona. And Brandon Johnson, they went right into him in the last contest. Six straight points for Johnson the last time these two teams played. And he's pretty much almost averaging a double-double for his career. Yeah, Brandon Johnson got the start over Pichardo. Remember, that was kind of a surprise a couple weeks ago, but he did exactly what he was supposed to, came in and got early basket. So look for Brandon Johnson to have continued success. You're right, he's got a neutralized schism. He's a stretch four, but he's very athletic. Don't be fooled. You're seeing black and white on the screen in uniform colors. That's Alabama State in their road black. It is a blackout here inside the Dun Oliver Academy. Jacoby Ross right in front of us. Alabama A&M in their home white. It'll be Brandon Johnson and Sissom jumping. Jacoby Ross tries to outrun Andre Kennedy for it, can't get it. And Alabama A&M will have possession to start. This is Brandon Miller with the basketball. He gets the screen from Andre Kennedy. Sissom will have it. He'll hand off now. 
to Walter Jones Jr. who drives in, nowhere to go, gets cut off. Jalen Reeder drives, he'll kick it back out. Miller drives to the basket, up over Ed Jones for the first two of the game. Early on, they did what they wanted to do, got the ball inside with the easy basket. Holston had that ball narrowly stolen by Sissom in Alabama State. Trying to stretch the floor a little bit, Alabama A&M getting in the passing lane here on the first possession. They're going to have to do that because with the back cuts and the way Alabama State can go to the basket, they've got to have recognition of where they are, Travis. Here's G, G to Holston. Alabama A&M in the zone. Now they'll switch to a matchup zone. Here's Jones. Pull-up jumper, no good. Rebounded by Walter Jones. Here come the Bulldogs. He That's double dribble right there. Brandon Miller. Jones comes out. Allows Jacoby Ross to go around the screen. Here's Andre Kennedy to Jalen Reeder. 15 to shoot for Alabama A&M. Reeder against Holston. He'll kick it outside the system. Back to Miller. Alabama A&M patient with the basketball. Outside to Walter Jones Jr. to Andre Kennedy pull up over Johnson is good. Kennedy really had a good game against Alabama State at Bill Harris Arena, and he is their leading scorer, their go-to guy. Gets a big first shot for them. Holston throws it into the kneecap of Jalen Reeder. Reeder was standing on the sideline. It'll stay with Alabama State. Here comes Fausto Pichardo now in for Brandon Johnson. Yeah, if he wasn't standing on the sidelines, that's a dunk right there for Reeder. Holston to Jones, threw it right between his legs. Jones just wasn't ready for the pass. And look for A.J. Farrar to get up early, I'd imagine. Here's Miller to Kennedy. Kennedy inside to Reader, and there's a dunk from Reader. 6-0 run for Alabama A&M to start. Not the start you wanted. Alabama A&M is feeling it right now. Very, very confident, very energetic. Here's Ross, a pull up. No good off the back iron, rebounded by Ed Jones. Jones goes up and hits it and scores and gets fouled. It's a big, you know, it's only 18-10 remaining in the first half, but that's a big basket by Jones. The putback, great job on the offensive rebound, and now he has a chance to cut this lead in half. Brandon Miller called with his first team. First, Ed Jones at the line for his first free throw opportunity. And, Daryl, back to the last possession. Some guys can catch a no-look pass. Some can't, and I think Ed Jones is one of those guys, if you're not looking at him, Kevin Holston was looking to his left. No, looked it into Jones, who would have had an easy score. Jones just wasn't ready to catch the pass. And you have to know that as a guard, that you can't get him the ball that way. Jones misses the free throw. Rebounded by Alabama A&M. We'll tell you something special about those shoes Alabama State's wearing in just a minute. As here's Miller. Miller will drive to Sisson. To Jones. Jones to the basket over G. G blocked it and threw it off the kneecap of Foster Pichardo. But G was on the baseline. They'll call him out of bounds after the block. A great block from G. Very athletic. But here's those shoes that Alabama State's wearing in celebration of Black History Month. Adidas unveiled a collection of NCAA uniforms and shoes inspired by the creativity, passion, and expression of the early 20th century Harlem Renaissance. Throughout the month of February, all Adidas Power 5 Conference NCAA men's and women's teams will wear full uniforms head to toe while the HBCU schools, Alabama State and Alabama A&M included, but A&M is a Nike school will be supplied shoes to wear in honor of Black History Month as Ed Jones. Big Ed Jones right there. Nice job. He's come in and he's given Alabama State some life offensively. Cut that lead to one. He scored all five points for the Hornets. Here's Reader. They're going to kind of block. Jones stepped in late. He did step in late and then tried to flop backwards, and they got him with the flop. Basket good. Reader will be at the line to shoot for the three-point play. Reader with a little teardrop in the lane that time, and I, Jones did a, a good job defensively. He got over late. He rotated late, and so they get him with the block and the chance for the end one. We have to talk to our PA guy, those of you at home that heard him. That foul was not on Fausto Petrarca. That foul was on Ed Jones. So those of you listening in New York, your boy's safe. Right now with no fouls as Vegetal G grabs a rebound. When you get a second-string PA announcer, that's what happens. Here's Jacoby Ross to Kevin Holston. To Ross, here's G. Here's Ross. Chardo tried to backdoor cut. Kennedy got a hand on it, knocked away. Reader comes up with it. There's no reason to make that pass right there, Travis. You don't have to go behind, you know, behind the back. No look pass there. Here's Sism. They left him open behind the arc. They let him step in two feet, and they still don't guard him, and he misses the jumper. Here's G. Quick trigger three from Reginald G. There yeah. you go. 
Reginald G ties it up and comes back with a little swagger after the shot and has a little something to say to Jalen Reeder. Reeder comes back the other way. He'll back it up, and he'll go to Jones. Jones to Miller. Got to get G and Ross going, Travis. Got to. Miller to Kennedy. Kennedy, mismatch with Jacoby Ross, and Foster Pachardo comes over to help and comes away with the steal. I like that defensive set, Travis. They doubled him with Pachardo and Ross, Kennedy on the baseline. Jones with a catch, looks down at the three-point line, misses this one, and Reeder comes away with the rebound. Jones was feeling it. Here's Miller. Goes around the screen. Holston fights through two screens to get back to him. Here's Kennedy. Gets Pichardo off his feet, goes up and lays it in. Alabama a and back on top, 10-8. Here comes Brandon Johnson for Fausto Pichardo. Every time Kennedy scores, look for somebody to come off the bench defensively. This pass stolen away by Jones. Easy dunk for Jones. Holston's gotten lucky a couple times. This time unlucky as they steal it away. Turnovers right now, the key, 12-8. If not for the three or four early turnovers by Alabama State, they'd be winning this basketball game. Here's Ross. Ross to Jones, back to G. G elevates over two defenders. Wow, that's Knocks it down. You know, some guys have to catch and shoot, Travis. They need a ball screen, not Reginald G. He can create his own shot with his elevation, and it looks so pure from out there. Here's Brandon Miller. 12-11, Alabama State trails by one. Kennedy, top of the key, inside to Sism. Sism gets Jones off his feet. Jones will get whistled for a second foul. You'll see a substitution now for Ed for Jones, that's two. But with 14-58 remaining first half, 12-11, Alabama a and leads Alabama State. You're watching Alabama State basketball on Hornet Sports Network back after this timeout. Welcome back to the Dunn Oliver Acadome. Alabama State trails by one, but there's some trends, Travis, that are looking good for the Hornets. First of all, they've hit four of their last five field goals. Three of those, three of four from behind the arc. Of course, G and Jones, the only two to scratch. Jones off the floor now in the way for Owosho, who comes in. But G has just really elevated his game, and Alabama State has reversed that trend really hot shooting the basketball. Some substitutions for Alabama State during that last time out on the floor now are Johnson, Toby Irusho, Leon Daniels, G, and Johnson. Here's Sisson to Miller. And, Dale, you'll notice, too, there's no respect when Sisson and Kennedy catch the ball outside beyond the arc. Pichardo, Jones, Johnson, whoever's on them, back up well below the free throw line. Here's Evan Wiley, Miller. Don't know what he thought he was getting out of that one. Thought Maybe he thought he got fouled. Threw up a wild shot. Reginald G comes away with the rebound. Here's G. Hesitation dribble goes outside to Daniels. Jacoby Ross now at the point for Alabama State. He'll back things up and run things for Alabama State. Here's Daniels in the corner to G. Another three on the way from Reginald G. You better get somebody on him. That, that was too wide open, and he is absolutely feeling it right now. The 1,000-point score to Sism. That's a walk. Sism backed his way in with a couple extra steps. The new Bradley Bill trend of college of NBA is now in college basketball. Yeah, he, he, he definitely traveled there, no call. That, I could have got him a couple times tonight already. Here's Miller. Kicks it outside to Reeder, three on the way, knocks it down. Alabama a and back on top. Reeder loves to talk. 
Here's Leon Daniels. G's calling for the basketball. Instead, they go to Brandon Johnson. Johnson went up for the dunk, and here's the story for you as, as we get the foul on Evan Wiley. About three or four weeks ago, we were in here in the, in the arena, and they were doing a video shoot right before conference season started. So Brandon Johnson, you know, they were looking for somebody to dunk the basketball. Johnson wouldn't go out and dunk, and I said, Brandon, you're 6'8", go dunk. For video, he goes, no, nah, man, coach don't want me to dunk. He wants me to lay it up into the square. Since then, the last two weeks, every time Johnson catches it on the block like he just did, Johnson goes up and tries to flush it home hard and did here at home, and this place erupted two weeks ago. He did the right job, the right thing there, Travis. He didn't go up two-handed. He switched hands, went up right-handed, and that's what caused – the foul by Wiley because he tried to go across his body. But as it is, he hits the first free throw to tie the basketball game up. And, you know, you talk about Reginald G feeling it. The last three games, he's really not been himself, 10, 12, and 10. And then you go back to seven points against Texas Southern. He's got nine here already in the first six and a half minutes, and Brandon Johnson puts Alabama State up by another point. It feels like he could have one of those 20, 22-point nights tonight. Here's Kennedy. No, sir. And Johnson, they're going to say he got him down low. Ooh. Kennedy went up to try to do the same thing Johnson did. Johnson thought he got away with one, thought it was a clean block. Referee thought otherwise. Yeah, I wonder if it's because he just swatted a little bit, or like you mentioned, he got him body on body down low. But as it is, no easy dunks inside. He did the right thing, and it pays off. Nope, it fell in. Andre Kennedy knocks it down. These two teams know each other relatively very well, more than anybody in this conference, including Texas Southern and Prairie View, not just because they're in-state rivals and they play twice a year as Kenny Knox second down, but as we go on the road, it's almost like when we go to Houston, we're in the same hotel. We switch hotels every road trip, so we see each other so much. Coaches are very good friends on both sides. Here's Iwusho, cut off by Kennedy. Kennedy then swats it away. And then he turns around and says something to Toby Man, after the block. He did say something. They are running that mouth for someone that's at the bottom of the standings. Here's Wiley to Miller. Miller three-pointer. No good. Kennedy knocks it away. G comes down with the rebound. And Kennedy bumps the Russo going down the floor. Here's Jacoby Ross to the basket. He's really struggled early. I mean, he's got to make everything go right now. Jacoby Ross, I think he's got four turnovers, Travis, early on with some bad passes, and now it looks like he'll sit. So Kevin Holson has really, really, really struggled here in the early going. Now with Jacoby Ross out, Kevin Holson will be at the point. Holson's got to find some way to get some fluidity in this offense. He came four straight trips down the floor, either threw it away out of bounds or threw it off of somebody. Here's Alabama a in the front court. Miller to Kennedy. Kennedy in the short corner. Hook shot is good from Andre Kennedy. That's a tough shot. Tough shot to defend once you get that step in the lane with the little baby hook. Very difficult shot to block. You got to swing that to Daniels, Travis. He's wide open on the wing. No one is even near him. And just like that. Daniels hits the three. He's wide open. He can hit the three. Third leading scorer or fourth leading scorer on the Hornets, and that's a big three to cut it, to get it back to 19 all. As Wiley pulls up inside the elbow there and hits the two, Alabama A&M goes back up 21-19. Alabama State in the front court. Daniels gets double teamed, and they do call the foul. I believe that's going to be on Brandon Miller. 11.45 to play here in the first half. We'll step aside, 21-19. Alabama State trails by a pair. You're watching Alabama State basketball on the Hornet Sports Network.
Welcome back to the Dunn Oliver Acadome. Alabama State continues its hot shooting. Three of their last four shots they've made. Five out of their last six three-pointers the Hornets have made. Of course, Reginald G, three of three from the three-point line as Alabama State heats up. It will be Alabama State basketball as Toby Owosho will inbound the basketball after the foul. And I, the foul, I think I got the foul on Brandon Miller. I may have to double check that. But Alabama State gets the ball. A.J. Farrar in now, Travis, for the Hornets as Holston's got it at the top of the key. Holston, Daniels, Pichardo, Farrar, and Iwusho. And then Holston about throws it away again. Holston, a floater, got it back. Pichardo tried to follow it with a dunk, missed it. And here comes Brandon Wright for Alabama A&M Reader in the corner. So Kevin Holston has got two turnovers and had three passes deflected. Here in the early going. They're going to call a block. They say he didn't give room to move. But when you're that, double teaming like that on the sideline, Travis, you don't have to. You use the sideline as an extra defender. That's that's kind of a, a weak call. It's not just the way the call is. That's a rule that they need to do away with because a guy pulls up his dribble, gets double teamed. He's moving his ground. He only has one foot he can move. He's got to keep his pivot foot, so you're basically rewarding him if he decides to move his pivot foot. Yep, it's a great point. And that's what happens, and that's not just because it was on Alabama State. Alabama State has benefited from that call as Reeder, baseline jumper, puts Alabama A&M about, about four. Reeder loves to talk. He's talking to the guys sitting on the, the floor seats. Leon Daniels will drive in. He'll challenge Andre Kennedy, misses it. Irusha went up. He pump faked and got Reeder and Kennedy in the air. If he'd have just gone straight in the air, it would have been an easy basket. Instead, he gets the foul call on Jalen Reader. That'll be his first. You give him credit for the offensive rebound, but Toby's got to finish strong there, Travis. He's right underneath the goal. He's got to absolutely use his height and finish there. Four-point deficit for Alabama State. Rusho knocks down the first. This blackout is a great idea. It's kind of neat seeing a different uniform at home, and there's a lot of black in the crowd right now. State of mind, T-shirts being worn, great atmosphere. Right now, though, Alabama and AM is kind of taking this crowd out of it. They're a little bit quiet. Hey, Rusho buries both, 23-21. This place will get going in a minute. Wait till halftime. We'll have a special halftime, and you'll see it here on your screen. Daryl will be alongside with you at halftime as I go take a break, try to get my voice back. I'll be going over halftime stats and trends and maybe the scoreboard from around the SWAC. Reader. This goes off of A.J. Farrar's foot. Well, out of the track and field programs, they won. The men won their third consecutive indoor track title just yesterday in Birmingham. The women won their 11th consecutive conference title. And Richie Bean becomes the all-time winning as coach in indoor track and field since his inaugural season of 1976. Sism almost had that ball poked away by Farrar. Then Petrardo tips it away. Yerusho was looking for Farrar, couldn't get it to him. Kevin Holston. He'll drive, get hit. They'll call a foul on the floor. It'll be against Walter Jones. Foul on Walter Jones, second team five. Jones trying to extend the defense there. Holston. To Iwusho, inside of Pichardo. Pichardo will be matched up against Andre Kennedy. Goes up, gets a foul call on Kennedy. Pichardo used his length and got the foul call. He did a good job with the ball fake that time. He leaned in. It was very unorthodox shot, but he does get to the line, which is an opportunity to tie this basketball game up again early on. Pichardo. No good on the first.
Alabama A&M getting hot now. Travis, they're four of their last five from the field. The Hornets have cooled to one of their last four. Kennedy plays a lot of minutes, Travis. I don't think he's come out of the basketball game yet. 9.52 remaining in the half either. Here's Reeder. To Miller, back to Reeder. Jones to Kennedy. Here's Miller. Russo does come away with a steal. I was about to say a near steal. Goes to the basket. He was out of control, but he'll get the foul call. I think Miller was keeping him up the whole time. Yeah, that, he gets bailed on that. If he gets clean separation, you know it's dunk time. But he kind of had to really muddle through, and he was so unorthodox going to the to the basket, he gets bailed out. Now he gets an opportunity again to perhaps put the Hornets back in front. Alabama State 5 of 7 from the free throw line. Make that 6 of 8. We will show. Ties it up. By contrast, the Bulldogs, Travis, have only gone on the line three times. Daniels and Farrar on the block. And Russo doesn't need him. He knocks it down. Done what he needed to do. Came in off the bench. Four points off the bench for Coach Jackson. And now the Hornets have the one-point lead. Here's Reeder. To Miller. They keep it across to Reeder. To Jones Jr. Three on the way. No good. And this crowd's going to let him know about yeah, it. Yeah, that's what happens when you run your mouth early on every time down the floor now. That was an ugly shot. Kevin Holston to Wusho to Holston. They get it across with about three to spare as Daniels will now get it back to Holston to run the offense. Back to Daniels. Quick three on the way is good. He's been he's emerging, Travis, as another <laughs> offensive force off the bench, another three-point weapon, and that's big as you get into tournament time. Daniels, an all-panhandle performer last season at Tallahassee Community College, turned down several other D1 offers to come to Alabama State, and this is what they've been looking for out of him is another scoring threat. Here's Jones. Jones refused to shoot after the last air ball. He was behind the arc, held on to it, and then Farrar commits the foul on the block. That's his first foul. Okay, actually, he's got him his second foul. Correction. Team's fifth. G checks back in. That's a nice break. And, and you know, that's what's great about the minutes that Daniels can give you uh, with another sharpshooter out there. He can be a guy that comes off the bench and spells G. Here's Kennedy against Pichardo. Kenny has one thing on his mind, that's to go to the basket. And now he finally gives it off and gives it to Jones. They're really doubling him low with his back to the basket. I like that defensive strategy. Now they're extending with Pichardo. That's a walk. Jones gets into Pichardo, a charge call. So Jones, back-to-back -back possessions, air ball and a charge call. And that shot had to go up with one second on the shot clock. And I believe Jones, it's recliner time for Jones. He's going to have a seat. Um, good job that time by Fosto. Didn't get in too deep underneath the basket, Travis, and got set and got set early. And now Alabama State can extend this lead just like that. Here's Holston to Daniels. They'll break the press easily. Here's G. 8-0 run for the Hornets, Travis, in the last 249. Six of seven from the three-point line. Just absolutely scorching. Holston. Inside of Pichardo had it knocked away. Toby's telling Holston where to throw the basketball. He says, I want it up high. Don't throw it below my knees. And now Jacoby Ross comes in. And a man, Travis, we can get him going. Should be a media timeout. We'll see if they call it. It's under eight. 7.49 on the clock. Now they recognize it. Media timeout on the floor. We'll take it with them. 27-23. How about that? Alabama State has pushed the lead out to four. Back after this timeout.
all that I learned about public service and making a difference in the lives of others as a long-term educator and an Alabama state senator was developed and nurtured at Old Mother Beer. As we enter into our 151st year of advancing a legacy of perseverance, progress, and triumph, I invite you to join me on a journey of continued excellence by visiting our campus located in Alabama's capital city of Greenville or by visiting us online at alasu.edu. I'm sure you will find many reasons to renew your academic pride, pursue a degree, and support the Alabama State University. Help us tell the world what we already know, that it's a great time to be a Hornet. Welcome back to the Don Oliver Academy as we're having the mascot dance-off right now between the Hornet and the Bulldog. A couple of trends, Alabama State on an 8-0 run in the last three minutes and 15. Conversely, Alabama A&M is scoreless in their last three minutes and 15. So Alabama State's done a great job defensively holding the Bulldogs at bay and has gotten some quality minutes from Awoshu off the bench and Leon Daniels off the bench to go with G's nine. That secondary scoring and that bench scoring, Travis, has been huge for the Hornets, and that's why right now they have the four-point lead. Now, the turnovers, you know, looking at the stat sheet, I really expected it to be a lot more lopsided than it is, but both teams with four turnovers right now. And you talk about that bench scoring. That's something Alabama State has done well all year, outscoring people off the bench as G misses badly. Good job by – oh, shot clock violation. I was going to say good job by Fausto Pichardo to keep that alive by knocking it off of Reeder, but it was a shot clock violation, did not catch iron. Mickey Castleberry, the referee today, goes over and explains to Lewis Jackson. Jackson wanted to know what happened because he thought they should have possession. Instead, it will be a shot clock violation. Ball goes over to Alabama A&M. They reset the game clock to 742. Shot clock will be reset to 30. Hornets up four, and Alabama A&M now in possession of the basketball. Here's Brandon Miller. To Reeder. Reeder to Miller. Miller with it. Left side to Evan Wiley, back to Reeder. Misses this shot badly. Wiley comes up with it. Miller with it. Yeah, you don't want to give up offensive rebounds. You want a one and done, especially the way Alabama and AM is struggling right now to score. It's been over four and a half minutes. Wiley to Miller. Miller drives. Had it knocked away. Russo immediately ran the other way. Tried to get the officials to call it. He knew it went out on him. Tried to get it. Say went off of Alabama AM. It'll stay with the Bulldogs. This lead right now by the Hornets has been really precipitated by the defense that they're playing. They've done a great job of locking down the Bulldogs. Miller will run the offense for Alabama State. Or excuse me, for Alabama A&M. Iwusho gets a hand on it. Wiley beats Ross to the basketball. Then Kennedy out muscles Pichardo. Four goes up and scores. With three seconds left on the shot clock, too. I mean, that was just unfortunate. Alabama State did a great job playing defense all the way through that possession. G. To the basket, goes up, hangs in the air, and hits the double figures already. It's a great jump step. Jump, stop, step. They teach it in all the camps. Kids need to learn to do it at an early age when you're watching on TV. That jump stop gives you separation in the lane. 11 points already for Reginald G. Alabama State back up by four. Miller at three. That ball almost stuck on the back iron. Great Leon rebound. Daniels comes away with it. Really looking to push. Daniels are open. Nice look, but that ball's got to get up. Pichardo struggles with the ball at his feet, Travis. Uh, you touched on a good move by Daniels. Daniels avoided the charge from Kennedy, dished it off with his left hand, and stepped out of the way as Kennedy stood there for the charge. Alabama State was an opportunity there to go up six. Those of you watching at halftime, stay with us. We'll honor the indoor track and field teams. And then all of our student athletes who are 3.0 or better on the year. Here's Miller. Baseline, he'll kick it out to Reeder. Reeder got that ball through a bunch of hands to Brandon Wright. Wright misses the shot. 
G comes away with the rebound at 6-3. Sism at 6-8. Flew in and was over Reginald G that time and then commits the foul after G gets the rebound. Alabama a and has got an ice cold. Give Alabama State credit for that. The defensive rotations, Travis, the way they're extending, double teaming Kennedy down at the bottom has really paid off. And now you put G at the line, who's already got 11. Johnson, G, Iwusho, Daniels, and Rawls for Alabama State. One-on-one opportunity for Reginald G is good. I think Iwusho, Travis, has given them great energy off the bench. He's kind of tilted the game when he came in. You know, he's only got four points and one rebound, but his energy has really helped, and he's played strong defense. But you talk about it, and you talk about what it means for Alabama State to have the depth they do. You heard head coach Lewis Jackson talk about it. As G knocks this one down, 11 to two, as they outscore an Alabama A&M off the bench thus far. And Alabama State overall on a 12-2 run, the last 5:25 of this basketball game. Here's Sism. Almost loses it. Miller chases it down. Great defense by Daniels. He will not let him get around the corner. Here's Evan Wiley, a three-pointer on the way, left it short. Russo came up with the rebound for Alabama State. Here's Jacoby Ross. You know, we talk about this Alabama A&M team. I like to hang around a lot. They're playing for their third head coach in three years. Daniels to the basket, left it short. And a lot of these guys have been guys that have been left over in those three years. Here's Wiley. He gets bumped by Jacoby Ross. And Ross went to knock that ball out of the hand of Wiley, and that's what started the ruckus in the Southern game. Yes. Ross did the same thing, and Southern didn't take a liking to it, and Kevin Holston and A.J. Farrar got in the middle of it. Well, and Wiley gave him a little bump there, a little shove. Six team fouls for the Hornets. The next one will have Alabama A&M in the bonus. Here's Wiley. to Miller inside to Kennedy. Kennedy turned around. That ball looked good when it left his hand, looked good when it got up on the rim and then fell out. They are ice cold, scoreless in the last 214 after going four and a half minutes for that. Russo challenges Kennedy, misses that one bad. Here comes Jalen Reeder. Reeder, pull up, easy score for him. Reeder with 11 to match. Well, he's the high scorer for Alabama A&M. He's just taking over that honor over Kennedy. Houston set to check in for Alabama A&M. Man, Jacoby's just struggling. Misses a wide open shot just inside the top of the key. Miller inside the Sism. Sism went up to dunk it. Russo knocked it away. That's a late whistle right there. Late whistle and late from the outside. Way he's over here with the fans almost in the suites. And he makes that call. And he makes that call way late. 340 remaining here in the first half. 31-27. Alabama State leads Alabama AM. You're watching Alabama State basketball on the Hornet Sports Network.
Welcome back to the Dunn Oliver Acadome. Daryl Dappert here with Travis Jerome. 340 left in the first half. Alabama State leading Alabama AM 31-27 in the Hardwood Classic. The Hardwood edition of the Magic City Classic. Looking at a couple things. Reginald G with 13 points for Alabama State. Reeder and Kennedy with 11 and 10 respectively for Alabama AM, which is no surprise if you follow the Bulldog basketball program. Those are the two that make it go. Alabama State now on a scoreless streak of their own. Last two minutes they have not scored, and they are actually, though, four of five with their last field goals. Alabama A&M, one of five, and one of eight from the three-point line. However, Sism will be at the line, and I believe he's got two that he's shooting right now. 340 remaining here in the half, Sism. I'd put Sism at the line a lot if I had an opportunity, especially if he has an opportunity to dunk. He's got a Really awkward looking free throw style. He actually makes a second. 31-28 is down to three. Austin Rogers in the game for the first time. Here's Ross. He'll try to get it to AZ in the corner. AZ was deep in the corner. Ross threw that one short, picked off. And here comes Alabama A&M away with it. Here's Miller. A lot of new players on the court for both teams right now. And we'll reset them as quick as we can. Reader knocks down a three. And we're tied at 31. Reader's really having a big game. 14 points for the Bulldogs. And as you mentioned, score tied again. Looked to get G off a ball screen to see if he can answer. So AZ, Jacoby, Brandon, Reginald G, and Austin Rogers all in for Alabama State. G goes around the screen just like you called it. Goes up with the left hand, misses it, but he will get fouled. And it'll go on, guess who? Jalen Reeder. So for Alabama AM, it it'll be Wiley, Miller, Reeder, Sism. And on for the first time is Brandon Houston, a sophomore. G looking to get his 14th and 15th point from the line to become the game's leading scorer. First one good. And this one rolls around and drops. He used every bit of the iron that time. Alabama State back up one. G left this one short. Sism pulls down the rebound. AM can take the lead on this trip. Here's Miller to Sism. To Houston. Reader now with it. Tries to brush the hand off of AZ. Can't do it. And the freshman frustrates Reader. Here's Miller to Houston. They get it inside to Sism. Sism turns. Got and turned into four defensive players for Alabama State. And then AZ and Austin get in each other's way. Yeah, I, I believe with Austin there, it looks like he was he did not have full possession of the basketball. Totally different first half than what we're used to in this contest. Alabama State had a big halftime lead the last time these two teams played in Birmingham. Reader to Miller. They worked the ball around the perimeter under two to play. Houston to Reader. Reader drives against C, no good. No, it does come off. And then Reader gets the rebound. Here's Miller. Houston on the blocks, getting double teamed, little quick jump hook, gets it over Brandon Johnson. And now, Alabama a and Travis, takes a one-point lead. 115 to play. Alabama State can take the lead on this possession. They trail 33 to 32. Ross will run the offense. He'll get a screen from Austin Rogers to Reginald G. G drives in. Jumper over Houston. No good. Brandon Johnson, I was about to say, if there's not a whistle on that, then they're letting him play down low. Johnson went up to grab the rebound with his right hand, and he was in the middle of the lane, 
And when he landed, he was outside the left block. Wiley hooked him with the right arm and kind of tried to pull him out of the lane, and the official saw it. He saw it late, but he did see it. And now Johnson will be shooting the double bonus for the Hornets. Johnson, two of two from the line tonight. Let's see if he can get at least three for four or four for four on this opportunity. Knocks it down. He's three for three. Got some flash photography going on. Those are, I, I like those Adidas shoes a lot. As Alabama State, by way of Brandon Johnson's free throw, pulls even. Here's the second free throw from Johnson. No good off the back iron. And we just lost all power to the clocks. That's the first time that's happened this year, that the power's gone off on every single clock. We usually lose it on one shot clock when somebody kicks a button. That's what I'm wondering. If there is a plug or a cord. It's not the actual it's not the actual clock scoreboard on the wall. It's the scoreboard panel. As you watch everything on the table over there, somebody has kicked something loose. Not sure what it is, but our facilities guys are on top of it. Lucas Banks now under the table to try to get it fixed. I can tell you. The score is 33 to 33. I can't tell you exactly how much time is left because when I looked up, I looked, looked down, looked back up, the clock was off. Yeah, the the official stats has got it at 57 seconds. I don't know if that's exactly accurate. Oh, there it is, 56.6. 56.6, so. Time froze and took a snapshot of it. Here's Miller to Reeder. Right side, Reeder will bring it back left to Miller, to Wiley. They kick it inside to Kennedy. Kennedy pull up. No good over Austin Rogers. Brandon Johnson went high to get that rebound. There's about a seven-second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. And Lewis Jackson will use that 30-second timeout he was going to lose anyway. So he'll go into the second half with three. But now he'll get a chance to set something up with seven a seven-second differential, 7.1-second differential from the game clock and the shot clock. Yeah, and this matters because you know that Alabama a is going to have the basketball last and have the last shot. So you do not want to waste a possession right here. You want to have something drawn up good that's effective. You don't want to basically give a two-for-one. If you don't score here and Alabama a has got the basketball, they have a chance to go into halftime with the lead. So great move by Coach Jackson. Go ahead and run something. I'm sure he'll run as much clock as he can unless, Travis, something's there early. If a, if a G3 uh, is open early or, and he's left alone or Jacoby Ross can drive to the basket uncontested, then you take it and don't worry about running the shot clock down. Otherwise, run your offense and give Alabama a m as least time as possible on the clock. So it'll be Ross, C, G, Johnson, and Austin Rogers. No substitutions during that timeout. They go to Rogers, back to Ross, 15 to shoot for Alabama State. Ross will direct traffic. Still looking for his first points. Now G has it. G against Evan Wiley. Goes up. That'll be a charge on Reginald G as Houston stepped in late. Couldn't tell where he was as we looked up. Can't see the art from where we are. That was an easy charge to, to really draw because you could just tell G was determined to go to the basket. He was out of control, head down, shoulders down, and all – Alabama A&M had to do was hold their ground. They did, and now they'll call a timeout to set something up. So don't forget at halftime, folks, we're 14.4 seconds away from the half. We'll honor our indoor track and field teams who won the conference titles just yesterday. The men won their third consecutive. The women won their 11th consecutive indoor title. Richie Bean became the all-time winning as coach in track and field indoor history in the conference in the first season. For that was in 1976, so a big honor for him. And then we'll honor over 190 student athletes who made a 3.0 or better in the fall semester. Here at Alabama State made the AD's academic honor roll. And then we'll have a special presentation from the cheerleaders. 
have a little bit of halftime stats. We'll have some SWAC scores from around the country. And they'll do all that while they watch everybody else on the court. There you go. Or I could just let the action speak for itself. Here's Evan Wiley. Miller will run it up the court for Alabama a and The Bulldogs will hold it for the last shot. You would think Reeder goes inside to Kennedy. Kennedy goes out to Reeder. This is going to be a two-man game as Reeder goes up for a three and misses it. Ball knocked out of bounds. That's the half. So we'll go into the locker room, 33-33. We come back. It'll be Daryl Daffridge on at halftime. You're watching Alabama State Athletic Basketball on Horse Sports Network. Welcome back to the Dunn Oliver Academe here at halftime. Your halftime score, we are tied at 33. Looking at some other scores from around the SWAC, it took a little while to load, but we've got them now. You've got Mississippi Valley State up 49-43 on Alcorn State, that game being played in Mississippi at Mississippi Valley State's arena. Texas Southern with 338 remaining in the first half is up on Grambling State, 33-31. We mentioned this score is tied at halftime, 33-33. Prairie View at Jackson State with 11-29 remaining in the first half. Prairie View up 19-10 on Jackson State. It's be a great opportunity, great time to take a look at the SWAC standings as we come into play today. Prairie View A&M at 9-1 in the conference. Texas Southern at seven and three. And as we mentioned, Texas Southern right now up by two on Grambling. Prairie View is up by nine at Jackson State. Grambling, Alabama State, they're both at seven and four. Jackson State and Arkansas Pine Bluff at six and five. So you've got like four or five basketball teams separated by one and a half games right now. Alcorn State, four and seven, Alabama A&M, the Hornets' opponent tonight at four and seven. Southern at three and eight. Mississippi Valley State at one and ten. So that is your halftime scores around the SWAC. We're going to take another minute time out here as the student athletes from Alabama State that have a 3.0 or higher get recognized. You are listening to Alabama State basketball on the Hornet Sports Network. Welcome back to the Dunn-Oliver Academe. Your halftime score here 
in the hardwood edition of the Magic City Classic is Alabama State 33, Alabama A&M 33. We're going to look at your halftime stats here, brought to you by Metro PCS. Halftime stats, we mentioned the score, Alabama A&M 33, Alabama State 33. Alabama State closed the half on a one of six field goal percentage. Alabama A&M was one of seven from three-point land. So both teams ice cold to end the first half. But here are your halftime stats. First for Alabama A&M, they are 14 of 29 from the field, shooting it really good at 48%. They are, however, two of 10 from behind the three-point line, 20%. Free throws, they've only been to the free throw line five times tonight, and they're three of five for 60%. Individual honors for Alabama A&M. They are paced by the 14 points of Jalen Reeder. He also has five rebounds. 10 points, Andre Kennedy. He's got four rebounds. Brandon Miller with two. Jerron Sism with one. Walter Jones Jr. with two. Brandon Wright did not scratch. Evan Wiley with two. And Brandon Houston with two. So, between Reeder and Kennedy, they have 24 of the 33 first half points for Alabama A&M. The directive for the Hornets is to shut those two down in the second half. You have a pretty good chance to win. Turnovers, five turnovers for Alabama A&M. Total rebounds, 14 rebounds for Alabama A&M. And they have four steals to go along with eight assists, Brandon Miller with four of those assists. For Alabama State, 33 first half points. They are eight of 19. They have taken 10 less shots than Alabama A&M has. 10 less shots for the Hornets, 42%. They are six of eight from behind the three point line, 75%. They're 11 of 15 from the free throw line at 73%. So although they've taken 10 less shots, They do have 10 more free throws right now for the Hornets. Looking at the individual honors, Kevin Holston has yet to score. Jacoby Ross, and that's a huge, huge disadvantage right now for Alabama State. Guy that averages 13 points a game. Right now, he has yet to scratch. He has no assist, three turnovers in 15 minutes of play. Reginald G, 14 points, five rebounds. He's lighting it up for the Hornets. Ed Jones, five early points. Brandon Johnson with three, one rebound. Ed Jones has two rebounds. AZC has yet to score. Leon Daniels with six points off the bench and one rebound. Toby Owushu with four points and two rebounds. And Fosto Pichardo with one point. A.J. Farrar and Austin Rogers got in the game. They have yet to scratch. Got it. Here's the key, folks, in the second half. Mark this down right now. If Farrar and Jacoby Ross can get going for the Hornets, they will win this game by double digits. You know what you're going to get from G. Daniels has given you something good off the bench, but you've got to get points from Jacoby Ross and Farrar. Total turnovers for Alabama State, nine turnovers on six assists. Not a very good ratio. They do have four steals, 16 total rebounds. They are out rebounding Alabama A&M by two. So that is your halftime stats. Halftime score, Alabama State 33, Alabama A&M 33. We'll be back after this two-minute timeout. You're listening to Alabama State basketball on the Hornet Sports Network.
was developed and nurtured at Old Mother Beer. As we enter into our 151st year of advancing a legacy of perseverance, progress, and promise, I invite you to join me on a journey of continued excellence by visiting our campus located in Alabama's capital city of Greenville, or by visiting us online at alasu.edu. I'm sure you will find many reasons to renew your hand pride, pursue a degree, and support the Alabama State University. Help us tell the world what we already know, that it's a great time to be a hymn. Alabama State University's doctoral program in education and leadership policy and law offers both a Doctor of Philosophy and Doctor of Education degrees. We offer financial assistance in the form of scholarships, fellowships, and assistantships. For more information, please leave for 229-8809 or to apply www.alasu.edu. Remember, it's always a great time to be a hymn. Welcome back to the Don Oliver Acadome. We're about four minutes away from the second half starting as we had some honoring of the student athletes with the 3.0 and larger. We're going to go ahead and take another minute timeout. When I get back, we're going to do some scores from around the country as Alabama A&M comes back on the court along with Alabama State and warming up your halftime score again, Alabama A&M 33, Alabama State 33. You're listening to Hornet Basketball, I'm up State Basketball on the Hornet Sports Network. Welcome back to the Dunn Oliver Academe. Your halftime score, Alabama State 33, Alabama A&M 33. We're about two minutes away from getting the second half started. Before we do that, let's look at some scores across the country. Top 25 action, it was Virginia Tech. Number 21, Virginia Tech, 70 to 64 over Pitt. Right now in progress, number 20, Iowa, is losing to Rutgers, 40 to 37. In the SEC, 18th ranked LSU is beating Georgia 46-45. Number two, Duke is beating NC State 54-40. Games that have gone final in the top 25, Iowa State 78, Kansas State 64. Purdue over Penn State, number 12, Purdue 76-64. Number 17, Kansas had its way with West Virginia 78-53. Number 14, Texas Tech, 86, Baylor, 61. Number 16, Florida State over Georgia Tech, 69-47. Number four, Virginia over Notre Dame, 60-54. Number 15, Louisville in a thriller, 56-55 over Clemson. Michigan beats Maryland, 
Michigan number six in the country, Maryland number 23. Michigan beats Maryland 65-52. You, you, uh, North Carolina over Wake Forest, North Carolina number eight in the country. They win 95-57. Tennessee, Kentucky, Gonzaga, San Diego, and Nevada, Wyoming later tonight, Travis. As I'm joined again by Travis Jerome, who comes back after all the halftime festivities. Travis, 34 seconds to go, Alabama State tied with Alabama a and 33-33. And I made the point at halftime when you were off the air that Alabama State, if they can get something from Jacoby Ross and A.J. Farrar in the second half, they could really get some separation in this basketball game. And you, the good thing about getting away from the broadcast booth a little bit during halftime is you can walk around, and the, when the team comes out, you spend so much time with these guys that when you're standing around the tunnel, you're walking back over here, they'll come and they'll talk to you when they come out of the locker room. Jacoby's frustrated. Jacoby had a couple of looks, but hasn't really had a lot of chances, and that's what he said. He said, I've got to create my own chances here in the second half. So look for him to try to come around a couple of screens, maybe create some chances. And then Reginald G still feeling a little, you know, feeling a little bit after he had the first half he had. As you can see the look in Jacoby's face as he walks right by you in front of you. And we'll get ready to start the second half. It'll be the five starters for both teams on the floor. But now, hey, it's, it's back where we started. It's a tie game, second half, 33-33, second half underway here at the Don Oliver Academy. And look who takes the first shot of the second half. He left it short, but Ed Jones gets the rebound. He may have gotten hit on that one. Got his own rebound and went up again. He's done a great job in the offensive glass. And, and, and to your point about Jacoby, you do want to see him get aggressive. You do want to see him create his own offense. But you don't want him to force anything. You want to do it with inside the framework of the offense. That was an open look. It'll start falling. When it does, Alabama State can really get on a roll. And those of you watching the game, you may not have been able to see the, the look between head coach Lewis Jackson and Jacoby Ross after that last shot. There was a glance of, hey, you're okay. Keep shooting the basketball on Jacoby Ross. Mouth over to Lewis Jackson. I got you. Yeah, he so that, that shows you the confidence in, in Coach Jackson has in Jacoby. Yeah, he's proven it. He's got a track record. You know he'll get it going. And when he does, he's capable of carrying his team on his back. Ed Jones, one of two from the free throw line. Andre Kennedy pulls down the rebound. Alabama State back on top. First lead of the second half along to the Hornets. Now let's see what they can do defensively. They've got Holston on Reader, which is a mismatch height-wise. He's getting up about five inches, but I think they like Holston's quickness on him. Sissom drives in, dumps it off to Kennedy. Kennedy goes up and over and around Brandon Johnson. And the two-headed monster, the Kennedy Reader monster, the Bulldogs, puts them back on top. I was mentioning also if you could just find a way to shut one of those two down, that ball's knocked out of bounds. If you could just stop Reader or Kennedy, no one else is doing anything else for the Bulldogs right now. It'll be Alabama State basketball underneath the goal as Holston will throw it in. Jones cuts to kind of make room for Johnson, gets it into Jacoby. And here's Jacoby. He goes to Kevin Holston. Holston will go to Reginald G. Back to Kevin Holston. Holston pull up from the elbow, left that one short. Ball rebounded by Brandon Johnson. So two jumpers have resulted in two offensive rebounds for Alabama State. They've resulted in positive points. That's a big, big plus, too. If Alabama State can get an out-rebound, Alabama a and and a lot of that on the offensive glass, they can also get separation. Here's Miller, a lob inside to Kennedy. Johnson shows his authority defensively that time. Here's Jacoby Ross. Ross is thinking about it. Now he pulls it back out to set the offense. That's the kind of look in Jacoby's face that you've been waiting on all day as now he goes to G. G inside to Brandon Johnson with an easy dunk. Nice one-handed flush, right hand. I love it. That's not one you want to put off the glass. You want to throw that down, big fella. And the, the guy, from the uh, junior from Garfield, Ohio, does just that. Here's Miller. Miller over to Reeder. Reeder. Kevin Holston fights through one screen. He'll go around another away from the basketball. Here's Miller against Jacoby Ross. Kennedy was going to flash and then turn to post. Back to Miller. Kennedy does post against Johnson, faces up, goes to the basket, goes underneath, misses the shot. Evan Wiley came in and missed the putback. Johnson is giving Kennedy problems defensively. He's not as comfortable. Here's G with a behind-the-back pass. Jacoby Ross tried to go to Brandon Johnson. 
Had that ball picked off. Here's Miller. Miller then almost loses it. Evan Wiley. To Miller. Kevin Holston with a pick on Miller. Here's Jacoby Ross. One on two against two taller defenders. Left hand layup no good. Not a bad choice by Jacoby Ross. He pushed the envelope a little bit, but he was one on two trying to create. Nobody else was coming down the court. Yeah, no one followed him and trailed. Big fella's got to run the court there. But you'd like to see him pull that out when it's one on two. Here's Miller inside to Kennedy. Kennedy to G. Oh, over G, excuse me, misses the shot. Kevin Holson gets the rebound. G was motioning for help with his left hand. Didn't get it. Ross at three, missed this one wide. It's just it's just tough to watch, Travis. Really, he is really struggling. You feel for him. He's turning it over, missing the shots. Here's Reader. To Miller. Back to Reader. G is laboring at the top of the key. Here's Sissom. Oh, that's offensive. They're calling offensive foul against Sissom. And guess who took it? Brandon Johnson. That's a smart play. And I tell you what, Sissom, it wasn't, it wasn't cheap. He lowered the shoulder. He leaned in. And he laid down on top of Brandon Johnson. Brandon Johnson averages a charge a game. We're in game 23. He's taking 26 charges this year for Alabama State. I'd like to put that up against anybody in the swag to see who doesn't, especially a 6'8 guy. Look at look at Coach Jackson. He's got Jacoby on the sideline. Give him encouragement. Tell him, look, son, you know, we ride and die with you. Just keep your head up. Reginald G gives him a high five as he sits down. He just needs a breather right now. He's forcing it a little bit. And, of course, Leon Daniels still on the bench, and so is Farrar. Toby Wusho checks in for Jacoby Ross. Falso Pichardo in for Brandon Johnson. G to the basket. Pichardo went up to dunk it, got the ball hit from behind by Sism. Rebounded by Evan Wiley. That would have brought this place, and this place would have erupted if that would have been finished. Here's Miller to Wiley. Back to Miller. Miller to the basket, kicks it out to Evan Wiley. Three on the way is good. Big three ties it up by Wiley. Here's G. He gets Sism backpedaling. Bang. And now G's looking at him. You know, that's the thing. It's just, it's just they keep swapping threes. 15 37 to play. Timeout on the floor. We'll take it with them. Alabama State leads 51 38 back after this. Welcome back to the Don Oliver Rackadome. Daryl Dappert here with Travis Jerome courtside. 41-38, the Hornets over the Bulldogs in this hardwood edition of the Magic City Classic. I like the way Coach Jackson referred to it two or three weeks ago. Said he used to call it the Steel City Classic, which is near and dear to my heart. Looking at a couple of the trends, Alabama State one of four in their last field goal attempts. That includes one of four of their last three. Same with Alabama a and They're one of four. So both teams really haven't come out and shot the Woods on fire. You got Picardo, P Pichardo, Woods, uh, correction, Pichardo, Jones, G, Holston, and Owushu on the floor, Travis. I just thought I would let you announce and say two of the three were on the floor at the same time to see if I could get you, and it worked. Yep. 
But 41-38, Alabama State on top of Alabama A&M. Reeder to the basket. Irusho challenges. They kick it out to Sism. Sism goes up over Ed Jones. And Jones looks at the official and wonders what the call is going to be on. Jones did have his arm in his back the entire time. Yeah, he, he looks very perplexed about that. Now, timeout again. This is the actual media timeout. Alabama A&M called the other timeout, so we'll step aside again for this timeout. 41-38, remains your score, 15-15 to play. You're watching Alabama State Basketball North Sports Network. Welcome back to the Dunn Oliver Akadome. We had a quick media timeout after another timeout. So right now with 15-15 remaining in the ball game, your score Alabama State 41, Alabama A&M 38. As we look at the uh, dead ball stats right now after that last timeout, two things jump out at me. The rebounds, Alabama State 22-18 rebounding advantage over the Bulldogs. But Alabama A&M has only turned it over seven times as opposed to ten times for Alabama State. Right now, Sism, who's a 67% free throw shooter, Travis, will be at the line, and he is shooting two. One of two on his first trip was Sism. Let's see what happens on this opportunity. And this is the first. While he's at the line, let's take this chance to update Alabama State fans on some other things that have been going on. Alabama State baseball won yesterday, 23-12 over UAPB in the 11-run first inning for Alabama State. They play again at 7 o'clock tonight in New Orleans. That game, you can see the live updates on the box score on Alabama State Sports. The Sism misses the second. We'll update you on some other sports here in just a second. One going on on campus right now, which is softball. Iwusho to Kevin Holston. Olsen thought about the three, goes to Russo short corner. This one too strong. Brandon Miller chases down. Softball loses today for the first time, 9-8 to eight to Western Carolina. They were winning that game 6-1 to one in the sixth. Sism spins, goes over A.J. Farrar. And again, the whistle away from the basketball. Really late. I don't know how you see that with the – there's just a mass of bodies underneath the goal there, Travis. You're getting blocked out. Unless you see it, don't call it. And it was, again, late. It bails Sism out, who had a poor shot. Here's Sism again at the free throw line. 0 for 2 on his last trip, 1 of 4 on the day. And what do you know? He knocks down two tennis teams in action today. That's why they weren't on the floor at halftime. They're posting Jacksonville State. Those matches should be just about done across the street at the Olean Black Underwood Center bowling. And the SWAC East Roundup. They continue to lead the SWAC as Sism hits that. All of those teams are in action this weekend. Track and field won the indoor track and field championships yesterday. Men's ice hockey tonight drops the puck at 730. Uh, well, we'll talk about that later. You can talk about <laughs> I that. I start that program. Can I start You can that talk program? about ice hockey during the, the week. The Ice on that Hornets. That would be a great name. Here's Kevin Holston, three-pointer on the way. No good off the back iron. Ball rebounded by Miller. Here's Andre Kennedy, 41-40. Alabama State leads. Here's Evan Wiley to Miller, wide open three. Bears it. You can tell that one was good when it left his hand. And Alabama State has gone ice cold, one of their last four. And because of that, the Bulldogs have now jumped up two. Now, Holston to G, back to Holston. Alabama State took a quick shot last trip. Kevin Holston came right across the timeline and took it on three. This time they're running the offense, but he's giving the ball up now for the first time to Pichardo. 
Pichardo inside, nowhere to go. Jump hook, no good. Kennedy pulls down the rebound. One look, one pass right now for Alabama State, and that's all they're being held to. Miller, right side to Kennedy. Need a stop right here if you're Alabama State. Here's Miller to Reeder. Reeder spins, goes over Holst, and knocks it down. It's a tough shot to defend right there. He really muscles his way, and his Daniels set to check in. G will answer. Pachardo tips a rebound away, then Kennedy tips it across the half court. It'll stay with Alabama State. Leon Daniels, Jacoby Rawls check in. This just kind of feels like a big possession, Travis. I know there's 13, 14 left in the game, but Alabama State has let a four-point lead turn into a four-point deficit. And I think they need some points to stop the bleeding right here, get this crowd into it a little bit. Daniels can provide that. G can provide that. A lot of options on the floor now for Alabama State. Rossi, Russo, Pichardo, G, and Daniels all out there for the Hornets. Daniels in the corner to Russo. Toby tries a three, left this one way short. That's not the man you want taking a three from the outside for Alabama State. He's hit two for his career. Here's Sism to Reeder. 15 to shoot. Over to Sism. Miller inside to Kennedy. Kennedy up over G. Misses. Pichardo got the rebound. Good rebound that time by Pichardo. Big, big board. Here's G. There you go, Jacoby. Excuse me, Ross. No good. Rebound by Russo. Ball tipped by Miller. Ross able to retrieve it. So they'll get another opportunity on this trip. Down four. Ross, a three from top of the key. This one went all the way down and out, and that's just the kind of luck Ross has had right now. That was a good look and a good shot. It was, and it was all the way down. That three would have been big for his confidence and the scoreboard right now. Miller, this crowd sitting on their hands. They need something big to happen. Here's Kennedy. He'll drive against Pichardo. Runs into G. No call. Ball rolling around on the floor. Here comes Leon Daniels. Right side to Reginald G. G against Reeder. Spins, goes up, misses the shot. He came down and made a jam to his back. He's had back issues the last two years. Alabama State, one of their last nine, Travis. They had not scored in over three minutes. Alabama a on a 7-0 run. Here's Kennedy to Reeder. To Kennedy. Kennedy let that one short. Then Pachardo almost tipped it in. Andre Kennedy is just battling everybody down there from Alabama State and almost came away with an offensive rebound. Oh, nice show. There's the move we were waiting on. Toby went baseline, went underneath the basket, came up with it, 45-43, 11-11 remaining here in this contest. Alabama State down two. Timeout on the floor. We'll take it with them. You're watching Alabama State basketball on Hornet Sports Network. Welcome back to the Don Oliver Academy. 11 11 left in the ballgame. Toby Owoshu with a nice up and under swoop move to the basket. He does get fouled. He'll be shooting the and one. And what's nice about that move is he kind of used the basket as a little bit of a of a screen for him to get be protected. Alabama State was one of nine in their bat last field goals before that shot. And they stemmed the tide a little bit of that Alabama AM 
7-0 scoreless run right now. So Arusha will be at the line to try to complete the three-point play. AZ Say checked in during that last time out to give Reginald G a break. We told you it looked like G may have jammed his back a little bit. He's had those issues. He'll be fine, but it's just to give him a break. And Arusha, Alabama State down by a pair. Knocks it down, 45-44, 11-11 remaining here in this basketball game. Alabama State going into the press now. Good move by Coach Jackson. See if they can get him turned over. As the Bulldogs break the press rather easily. Here's Miller with it in the front court for Alabama A&M. Goes around the screen, gets it to Evan Wiley. Wiley to Johnson, back to Wiley. Wiley, a pull up just inside the arc, and misses it. That's good Ace. defense right there by the Hornets. That was a poor shot by Wiley, Travis, and they did exactly what they needed to do defensively. And AZ able to track down the rebound for Alabama State. Here's a foul. That's Wiley trying to get the uh, seal off the corner that time. AZ a little quick, and that's his third, Wiley's third. Here's Irusho. See if Jacoby can hit a shot here to put Alabama State up. That'd be huge right now. Jacoby Ross to Irusho to Daniels. Irusho tries wow. again on another three and knocks it down. Six straight points for the Irusho, and he gets them back up 47-45. How about Toby? Look at that play by Toby. Knocks it into the third row. And that gets Lewis Jackson ready. How about this for Toby? Last year, 9 of 24 from behind the arc. Coming into this contest, he was 2 for 20 and missed that last one badly. Not shy about shooting the basketball, just hit that one like it's natural. Well, it looks like he's more comfortable around the top of the key, you know, Travis, or the elbow area than the baseline, the sideline. And he squared up, shot that nicely. I don't know what's going on right now at the scorer's table. Think they're going to reset the shot clock, maybe? Why? Well, I don't know why they would do that. Brandon Wright checks in for Alabama A&M for the first time tonight. 26 to shoot, 10-11 to play here in the second half. Alabama State back on top. And this is what you were hoping for, Alabama State, to get back on top and the crowd to get back involved. Here's Miller. Alabama State will go back into their zone. Outside to Reeder. Reeder tries to bust the zone, and that one rolls around and falls somehow. 48-47. Toby was late getting out of the challenge. Nice AZ move. to the basket. Finger roll is good. How about that from the freshman in his first home series against Alabama A&M? Great explosive first step that time by AZ. 49-48. Sism. Top of the key. They go inside to Houston against Brandon Johnson. Johnson knocked that ball away with his hip after he got up in the air. Here's AZ. He gets Reeder turned and went to Ross. Daniels keeps it from going in the backcourt. Here's Ross. He'll call the play with about 18 to shoot. Toby, top of the key, over to Leon. Leon to AZ in the corner. Three on the way. The freshman misses that one. Give him the confidence to go ahead and shoot it, though. And they're doing this with G on the bench, getting much, need, much needed rest. Miller pull up just inside the lane, misses it. Johnson had the ball knocked away from him by Houston. Sism comes up with it and scores. Yeah, you hate to see that because you got a, a one-point lead, you're going the other way, and now you're down one because you can't control the basketball. 8.35 remaining here in this basketball game, 50-49. to 49. AZ in the corner to Jacoby, back to Toby. Over to Leon Daniels, three on the way. Boy. Shoot it, Leon. Leon's been stroking it tonight. That's his third. He's three of five from behind the three-point line. Keep shooting it, Leon. 52 to 50. 8-10 remaining here in this basketball game. Alabama State up by a pair. Miller to Johnson at the elbow. Alabama State extending the zone how they did against Prairie View a little bit when they got back into that game. Miller into the basket. Johnson challenged late, floated it over Johnson's hands. Timeout called by Alabama A&M, 7.55 to play. 
We're going to keep it here during this time out. Let's you enjoy the sights and sounds of the Del Oliver Akadon. Welcome back to the Dunn Oliver Acadome. 7.55 remaining in the basketball game. Daryl Dapperich with Travis Jerome here at the basketball edition of the Magic City Classic. We are tied at 52. It looks like it could be one of those games as neither team has been able to pull away. I think the largest lead might have been six by Alabama State in the first half. You know, I got to break it to you, Daryl. First of all, let me apologize to the folks at home for having to listen to me today. Been trying to get over this little sinus infection, kind of attacking my vocal cords things, but I wasn't going to miss this game or anything. Bad news for you, Daryl. The last time I had a partner at the Alabama A&M game at home, we went three overtimes. At home, but, yeah, that's right. That's Well, as long as we win it. Here's I'll the Russo to Daniels. Daniels to C, A-Z, to Toby. Toby. To Leon, where the offensive rebound knocks it down. Leon's done a great job coming off the bench. He's got, now that's his 11th point and has a chance for the conventional three-point play. The and one gives Alabama State the two-point lead as he's shooting the, the and one right now. 7.28 to play, 54-52. What a shot in the arm he's been off the bench. Daniels knocks the free throw down. Alabama State up by three, 55-52. Miller to Walter Jones, Jr. They beat the press to Reeder. Reeder thought about it, but Pichardo stepped in front. And they can quickly get back as Alabama State from the pressure into the 2-3 zone. Sism in the corner to Jones. Knuckleball from Jones. Mm. Missed that one badly again. Reeder comes away with it. Sism to Miller. Jones with four fouls and four of the ugliest shots I've seen in the history of college basketball. I thought he was going to try it again. He better not try Miller. it. He tries it again. I'd back off of him ten feet if I was Alabama State right Sism now. Sism against Pichardo. Shot clock. Four to shoot. Reader goes in. Floater. AZ stepped in to try to take the charge and stepped out of the way quickly. Good defensive stop and defensive position that time by Alabama State as G sets to check back in along with Wiley at the scores table. I'm sure Wiley's getting Jones. What do you think? A hunch? Maybe. Maybe getting Sism to spell Sism for a second. Here's Daniels. A two, a long two. His foot was on the line. Kennedy pulls down the rebound. 6-10 remaining here in the basketball game. Miller. To reader. Don't forget, we still have the under eight media timeout as Alabama AM took a timeout. Here's Reader Kennedy, excuse me. Kennedy's struggling here lately. He's forcing everything right now. Whatever Alabama State's doing defensively to match him up down low, it's working. Here's Jacoby Ross in the front court, 18 to shoot. Houston's going to check back in as well for the Bulldogs. Here's Ross to Pachardo. Back over to Ross. Jacoby can break down Reader off the dribble with six seconds on the shot clock. Ross gets by Miller, has a shot blocked by Sism. Iwusho got the rebound. Mickey Castleberry got the foul call. Wow, with wide as the shot clock. One tenth, I think, on the shot clock. I saw double zeros when the whistle blew, and they may go to the monitor to see when the foul was committed. If the, if the foul's committed, Travis, when there's nothing on the shot clock, then obviously it's a shot clock violation. And then they're going to look at the monitor. 
You got a coin in your pocket? Because this is one of those. This is going to be one of the longest replays because they're going to have to figure out if there was any time left at all. I mean, do they listen for the whistle? Are they looking for contact? There's no sound. Yeah, it's got to go by sound. There is no sound. So they have to determine at which point the hand came across the wrist of a wushu, and that's virtually impossible to figure that out. I mean, you can't tell when the foul was committed. At what point of his progression do they call the foul? Is it, you know what I'm saying? You, it, it, it's, it's tough. I never saw the light, though. That's what they're going to look for. I never saw yeah. the light. And I don't think the light ever came on even when it went to zero because that tells you there's actually still a couple of tenths of a second left. Yeah, I mean, if they're going to call it shot clock violation, they must have seen something very distinctive to overturn that. Mikko Castleberry goes to, to head coach Lewis Jackson. No argument from Jackson. But I never saw the light come on. If the light doesn't come on, that means there's still some time left. So that's what they're going to call a shot clock violation before the foul. Alabama a will have to go the length of the floor now. What gets this press? Here's a reader. The Sism almost loses it. 5.15 to play. 55-52. Alabama State up by three. Here's Houston. Ooh, he, that's misses, ugly. he misses his jumper, and then Irusho comes up with the rebound, gets pushed by Sism. Edward Sism hands right there with a little push out of bounds. That's his nickname. He's got can't, having a hard time catching the ball, so out of frustration he shoves a wushu out of bounds. And Brandon Houston will stay in. He thought he was leaving after that bad shot. That was a, a really bad shot. I think the rim moved. Alabama State scoreless the last 201 is what it says here on the stats. Alabama A&M 230. 458 to play. Here in the basketball game, 55-52. Here's Reginald G. Well, they back off. G's going to fight through the defense. As Leon Daniels has it. Here's Toby. Too quick. Toby against Reeder. Contact. They finally call it. Good thing they waited until he went up for the shot because he was fouled way early. Yeah, I mean, you know, he was fouled on the shot clock violation as well. They're having a really hard time handling a wushu down low. Very quick and athletic. And as long as he can stroke his free throws, you got Sism and Jones Jr. with four personal fouls for Alabama A&M. Only Jones, well, Jones and Farrar have three for the Hornets. Neither one is in the ballgame right now. 35 rebounds to 28 for Alabama A&M. Wusho rolls this one around and knocks it down. 56-52, Alabama State is now on top by four. Alabama State shooting 50%, Travis, from behind the arc, but 36% overall. You don't see that often. You don't. They've been at the free throw line 12 more times than the Bulldogs. We saw that at Bill Harris Arena. Alabama and a and does not go inside hardly at all. They're going to live and die with perimeter. And when they do, Kennedy, when he goes up, really doesn't create a whole lot of fouls. He goes up and under, goes straight up every time. Miller backs up for the three. I thought this one was going to come out. It rolled around and got a kind bounce off the backboard. They've had three that have rolled around, three threes that have gone out and come back in as they cut the lead to two. 57-55, Ross still scoreless. Goes to Irusho. Boom! Oh. Irusho went up for the dunk and got hit on it. I How thought he was going to bring the house down right there. And you can see it in Reginald G's face. He just walked up to Toby right now. I mean, he elevated, Travis. It wasn't that he didn't get high enough. He just got that wrist slapped on the way in, and he is really a handful right now athletically for Alabama AM and m to, take, to handle. And if you could go right at Reeder, he's got three fouls. Reeder does. Get him his fourth. Left this one short. So you've got Jacoby Ross and Fausto Pichardo, two guys who combined for 25 points against Valley. They're struggling today. They combined for one. 
And Alabama State's still up by three, 58-59. Yeah, five. I mean, that's the thing. And they got nothing from Farrar either, who's been averaging, what, nine, eight, nine a game off the bench. And that's what we talked about in the pregame. You heard head coach Lewis Jackson talk about how deep this team is. You can't really key on the same player every game. And now Brandon Miller now has caught fire, and it's 58-58. He's hit two threes in a row after being very quiet early on in the basketball game. Here's Ross. To the basket floater off the back iron. Ross is just struggling. Yeah, you, you just feel for him right now. He's doing all the right things. That's a good shot. That's a foul, frustration foul right there. The good thing is, though, that's only three team fouls on Alabama State. And with 3.29 to play, it'll be Alabama A&M's basketball. We come back, 58-58 your score. Alabama State, Alabama A&M side. You're watching Alabama State basketball on Hornet Sports Network. Welcome back to the Nunn Oliver Academe. Daryl Dappers, Travis Jerome, 58 58. 329 remaining in the Magic City Classic here in Montgomery, Alabama AM, Alabama State. Cheerleaders having their little dance off right here as we went to that media timeout. And it will be Alabama AM basketball as Reader will bring it in from the side. Actually, now Jones, who Head scratcher to me, actually in the basketball game right now with four fouls. No, don't be, don't let that be a head scratcher for you. That's a bonus right now for Alabama I'll State. Take it all That's day. one less score for the Bulldogs. Now, as soon as I say that, he'll probably score. Here's Reader to Miller, over to Wiley. Jones kicks it to Reader, almost threw it out of bounds. Here's Miller with three to shoot. Oh, And Pichardo got away with one that time. Get it back to Toby. Here's Pichardo to Irusho. Late pass, or Irusho would have brought the house down, yeah. but Irusho does score on the layup 60-58. to 58. I wanted the oop, and the oop would have brought the house down, but as it is, you get to a very much needed two points as Pichardo knocked out Miller at the top of the key, it looked like. And that would have been a hard pass to get up in the air because you did have Reeder on Pichardo that time with the long arms. Here's a three from Wiley. No good off the back iron. That's a great job of boxing out. That will not, just other than the rebound, but that rebound was just textbook the way Pichardo did that. There's Daniels from way deep. Bang. There's it. How about that, Leon Daniels? 63 to 58. Big sequence right there with the Pichardo rebound and the Daniels three. That's winning basketball right there. Stay with us in the post game. Head coach Lewis Jackson will join us, and then me and Daryl will take us off the air. Here's Kennedy inside of Pichardo, or Kennedy against Pichardo, scores, excuse me. He does that every time. Fosto's got to be mindful of that. Kennedy does not go straight up. He pump fakes and head fakes every time, so don't go for that first one. Keep your feet on the floor, and you can block his shot. Here's Jacoby Ross. Three-point game. Alabama State leads. They don't have to rush his possession. Ten to shoot inside to Iwusho. Good night, Kennedy came out of nowhere and, and got that. And Alabama State gets it right back. No, you don't have to go behind the back there, Toby. It'll be so Alabama now. State basketball. Big sequence that time. Iwusha went up for the block for the shot. Andre Kennedy just came out of nowhere and hand above the block. Got the block, and then Alabama State created the turnover. They celebrated a little bit too much. Alabama AM did. 
the celebrated the block and give Alabama State credit for being just mindful of that. Now, Toby does not have to go behind the back on that, just make the nice pass or go straight up to the basket. But Coach Jackson leaves him in. And this, this place was loud. Pichardo to Ross. You think it's loud now? If we end up winning this game, just wait to see how loud it gets. Got a listener with a new nickname for Leon. Says the king of Leon. Here's Ross. Get in there. Ross, how about that? Ross has been struggling the whole game. And don't think the crowd was not aware of that because that one basket brought the house down. They felt good for Jacoby Ross. Here's Reeder. That's bad right there. Reeder with a bad three. Irusho comes up with the rebound. Smart play by Toby. Just back it out. You've got the five-point lead in a minute left. No reason to turn it over down court. Here's Jacoby Ross. Got to spread the floor now. Toby's got to get out on the wing. Really spread the floor and run some clock. Ross. Left side. Three on the way. When you Flash from Jacoby Ross. When you need 68 it over to there. 60. All you need is one. You get one from a shooter, and that gets him going. Jacoby Ross with the three. That was big. Those five points right there may have been the dagger and won the basketball game for Alabama State. And you got to feel so good for the kid. That was deep. That was NBA range, and he drilled it in Miller's face. And that right there was the dagger. And you knew it was coming after he got the roll. Ross has struggled the entire night. I'm talking about the entire night. He was 0 for 8. His first shot hit the front iron that he made. It bent the iron down and snuck over. And when it snuck over, you could just see the frustration just come Absolutely. out. Absolutely. This, this place erupted. What does that say, too? And that's a great question for Coach Jackson in postgame. Just the confidence level that Coach Jackson has in him. I mean, at that point, he was 0 for 8. Travis at one point in this basketball game. He's made the last two shots, and they keep letting him shoot it. And uh, that's big, and that's what you need. You, you know he's going to eventually do it. You ride and die with him, and he, he basically looks like he's won this ball game. 68-60, 37.3, straight for Jacoby Ross as Alabama A&M will inbounds underneath their own basket. Here's Miller. To our man has a shot block. I'm not even going to say his name. I wouldn't even guard him. I would not even guard him. I just let him shoot it. And the bad thing is he did it right in front of the A&M bench and Leon Daniels blocked it. And Daniels had something to say for everybody down that entire row. Here's Reeder. Goes by Ross over Pichardo, no good. Tip, no good. G with a rebound. Yep, and that may do it right there. Great rebound by G. All right, this is this is the best part of the game when you come here. He's the one that fouls out. Reader's a little quiet now. I don't see the the shushing motion that he had early in the game right now. As he misses the shot, 68-60. Alabama State and G can all but ice it right here and get to 19. Jones fouls out with just two points. He's one of five from the floor. And, folks, those four misses, you heard Daryl talk about it, they were not good misses. If you are doing a video on what shots not to take, a tutorial, those were it. And, it's it, you know, and, and to come down in crunch time and take that shot, I, it, I just don't understand that offensive set. There's G in your screen. He misses the free throw. Rebound by Wiley. Still a three-possession game. Here's Miller. Ross loses his footing. Here's Reeder. He had that ball on his hip for a long time. Missed the shot. I don't know who's going to score that basket. I think Kennedy tried Kennedy. to. How about that? Kennedy tried to throw that basket towards the rim, and Irusho was able to get it. But nonetheless, that'll do it. We'll let the crowd tell you who wins. 68-62, Alabama State over Alabama a and We'll be back with head coach Lewis Jackson and a special guest post game. You're watching Alabama State basketball on the Hornet Sports Network. Hey.
Huh? Oh, he'll sit? Okay. I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to get up now then. Welcome into the post game show, Travis Strong, joined by another home victorious coach, Lewis Jackson. And coach, we talked about this in the pregame. You can throw everything out of the window when it comes to this game, and you did up until the final minute. Well, absolutely. We knew that, uh, uh, like, A and M was gonna come in with everything they had. It's that type of game that we play, and we have to make sure that we're doing the things that we were doing because we had talked about this was gonna be, you know, their conference championship. Being that they were unable to go to the tournament, and this was going to be one of the highlights of their game, and they could come in and steal a victory here tonight. But it was a hard-fought ball game. Their guys played hard. They made shots. They made shots. We didn't do everything right, but we was able to make enough to stay around and stay close and able to pull it out down the stretch. Question, Daryl was on air with me all night. Question I'm going to ask you, and I've seen this all year, the confidence level in Jacoby. Jacoby struggled all night. It's a three-point game. He comes down and takes that quick shot, bounces off the front of the rim, finally falls for him. Frustration you can just see come off his chest. Next trip down the floor, pulls up from about 28 feet and just drains it like he's been doing it all night. Well, you know, Jacoby is that type of player. You know, we, we looked at him to score some baskets for us. He's capable of making those shots. And he was pressing too hard tonight to try to get him going offensively. And what we were trying to get him through, so just run the offense and be poised. You know, because he took a couple of those shots that didn't fall that we thought he had rushed. But, you know, I had all the type of confidence in the world in him, and he's shooting the basketball. And he stayed in there. He made some big ones for us. But our defense down the stretch proved to be good for us. We're going to bring this young man in behind you in a minute. But you talk about Toby and Russo every game and what he means to this program. And he deserves everything tonight that he gets. 15 points came off the bench. Big play. He, he, I mean, he swung everything defensively for you. Well, absolutely. You know, Toby, he's our – He's our energizer, you know, uh, he could very well be started for us, but he comes in 
and gives us a tremendous lift um, as a reserve player. He just plays hard. He's aggressive. He attacks the rim strong. And he has that type of confidence. And, you know, I wish all the guys had that type of confidence that he has. But it, it, he gives us something good every night down to, down on the ground. Court. Talk about his confidence. You know, he struggled from behind the three all year. He's only hit two. He took that bad three in the corner, missed it badly. I mean, he, he missed it real bad and then came back and hit another one. Well, he didn't want to take it. You know, we had ran the play. He got caught on that side, and the shot was for the guy in the corner. It, and he works on it every day. I knew when he hesitated about shooting, it was going to be suspect. But, you know, he shot an air ball. And I didn't say anything to him because I know he's going to try to make it up with the energy and effort that he gives. But he came back and shot the other top. It was a big shot for him. We talked about their post by Andre Kennedy, free game. He really worked in the first half and got some shots. Things that happened in the second half. I mean, you had smaller bodies on him. Original G frustrated Kennedy down low when he got matched up. Well, what we wanted to do was just try to tire him out. We said just keep running, keep running in the first half, keep attacking him, and, and, and try to wear it down. And they kept going in and out with him, so we felt like it was working. In the second half, we knew our guys had to log a lot of hard minutes. We were going to go small. So, you know, Reggie was probably just as strong as he is, but just not as big. But, you know, I thought the guys, and then they got, the, they got every uh, defensive rebound for us. That was good. Big win for you. You go on the road now, Southern and Alcorn State. You know, you as soon as you get in the locker room, I know what's going to happen. Everybody's going to break out and start looking at scores. We didn't look at them all night, so we have no idea what's happening in the conference. But this sets the stage two tough places to play, two teams that are near the bottom of the, the conference, Alcorn State and Southern. But now you're at the juncture. You've got six games left. Four of those six are against teams that you're fighting for that home seed for. These are two of the biggest games against the teams of Southern and Alcorn State. Well, absolutely. You know, again, everywhere you go in this league, the games are going to be tough. And we just have to find a way to grind them out one by one. You know, I think we got Alcorn first. Right. So, you know, that starts to power for, for me, actually, the probably other coach. You know, we'll start trying to figure out how we're going to go down there and beat them at their place. You know, it's a tough place to play. But, you know, we got to find a way to do it. You know, a good team's got to win on the road. And you talk about winning on the road. You can win and take these two. You can basically dictate who wins the conference your last four. Well, absolutely, you know, and, and, and that's what we want to be at. You know, if we can, like I said, this is a big road trip for us. We can go down and, and, and play hard at basketball and play with uh, smartness and understanding some toughness on the road and, and with the pause that it's going to take to be successful. And then we'll get, we'll get to come home for our last two our home games. So it, it, you never know what happens. Coach, you called it in the, in the pregame. You said it was going to be a tough one, and it was. You could throw everything out when these two teams play, but another victory at home, which is what you want to get every time. Well, absolutely. You know, we're trying to get them all home. We've been, uh, we've lost one up until this point. We just got to continue to try to take care of it. That home on the road, we got to take care of it. I'm going to get this junior in here and get him on the air. Congratulations, Coach Jack. Thank you. Go Hornets. We're going to get Toby Iwusho down here now with us. We'll see, we'll see if we can get the junior from Chicago to actually talk to us a little bit. Don't let, don't let a shy look when he sits down, the, the, little meek, the little meek look he gives. Toby is a very outgoing and, and special player. And, Toby, I was talking to Coach Jackson. Mm. You gave a lift to this team when you came in, and you do it every game. Yeah. What is it about you that can just energize when you come on the floor? Uh, I just try not to take any plays off. Uh, being from Chicago, I've just always been taught to be a tough player. And I've always been taught to work hard. So no matter how the game is going, whether I'm starting this game or not starting this game, when I come in, I just try and do what I can. And coach has just been on me uh, consistently about doing what I'm good at, not doing what everyone else think, wants to do, just doing what I'm good at. So whether that means shoot when I'm open, passing when I'm not, going to the rim, it doesn't matter. Well, let's talk about the shooting because I'm going to ask you about it. <laughs> and you know I'm asking you about it. The three in the corner, I asked Coach Jackson about it. He said when you caught it, you didn't want to shoot it. Yeah. He could tell. Yeah. But how confident are you, even though you're struggling from outside, how mm -hmm. confident are you? You took the shot and missed it, came back the next trip and drained one from the top of the key. Yeah. Coach Jack is always about, on me about uh, in practice about being ready to shoot, catching um, and exploding up when I shoot. He's on me. He said you can dunk the ball however way you want, but when you shoot a jump shot, you don't jump. So he's just always been on me about confidence and being ready to shoot. And like he said in the corner, when I caught it, I didn't want to shoot it because I wasn't open because I wasn't uh, ready to shoot. But I was so open, I had to shoot it. So on the next, when the timeout came, he told me be ready to shoot. And when I caught it at the top of the key, I shot it. You've been making a living at the free throw line since mm -hmm. the preview game. You've gone multiple times, eight times against preview eight times against the Latin Valley, and then you go to the line a lot again tonight. Yeah. What is it about your game that just frustrates everybody? Uh, I think 
I think in SWAC and conference, I'm pretty hard to guard because we uh, Coach Jack likes to go four guards, and a lot of teams go two bigs within three guards. So when he goes four guards, I probably have a slower, bigger guy on me, and I think I can take him to the rim anytime I want. Okay, got to ask, how's it feel to get up every time you get a chance? As soon as you touch the ball, everybody in the crowd stands up. They're, they're <laughs> expecting a dunk. Oh, uh, I just that's what I'm good at. Coach Jack said, "Do what you're good at." I'm good at dunking the ball. So anytime I see the lane open, I'm trying to dunk on somebody. Well, I got to ask because mm -hmm. I know you're going to say something to me. We're going to go ahead and put it out there for everybody to uh -huh. Why didn't Fox throw the alley-oop? Man, Fox is a guy, man. He wants every alley-oop, and then there's one time to throw the alley-oop. He throws me a lazy pass, but I got the pass, and I finished it, so I'm thankful, and I got him an assist. You got five games – or, excuse me, six games left in conference play. Mm -hmm. You're sitting exactly where you want to sit, mm -hmm. a chance to win it. Mm -hmm. These are the two biggest games. It may be against the two teams at the bottom of the bracket. These yeah. really are the, the two biggest games. Exactly. Because then you can control what happens because you got the four teams you're battling with after that. How important is that and how focused are you guys going into it? Uh, coach talks to us about focus, if, if not every practice, every day, whether it's sending something to a group message or talking to us in the meeting room. Focus is so important to us. And these next two games are our biggest game, not only because we could be sitting in the driver's seat, but because of our next two games. And it's just as simple as that. Like you said, we're in a position to control our own destiny. So we want to take care of business, don't overlook any teams, handle the scouting report. And uh, these are two teams we've beaten before, so we just want to go out and do the same thing. You know, me and you had a, a private conversation about, you know, not getting something that <laughs> we're just going to keep you off of off of Twitter yeah, right now. Because yeah. every time we that you, you get left off of Twitter, you, well. end, you end up with double figures. So we'll just keep that going All and right. we'll let it slide. But congratulations on the Thank big you. win. Tony. I appreciate it, Charlie. We come back, we'll have Daryl Daprich on with us to wrap things up. Here on the Hornet Sports Network, Alabama State victorious 68 to 62 as Daryl comes in now to join us here on the Hornet Sports Network as we'll go off the air as Toby comes out of the way and lets Daryl come in. And Daryl, we talked to, to Coach Jackson and Toby, and you know, confidence level exuding from both of them as they got the win. They knew it was going to be a tough game, but Alabama State able to come out on top. Great job. Bench scoring depth was the key. We talked about it pregame with Coach Jackson. And uh, they did just that. The, the points you got from Daniels and Awosho, I know you mentioned how many Toby had 15, Daniels had 15. Those 30 bench points really made up for Jacoby being off a little bit, but he scored five big points down the stretch. Those five points created the separation, uh, created the, the winning margin, so to speak. And because of that, Alabama State walks out of here with a big win. Now go to 8-4 and four in the SWAC. Get a little bit of separation, that little pack in the middle. And, of course, some of these games are still being played right now across the country. So, great win, great environment. Anybody that hasn't had the opportunity to be here for one of these basketball games, I would highly recommend it. It was electric tonight. And uh, Alabama State did what they needed to do finally with the last minute and a half, two minutes of the game. They dictated tempo. Don't underestimate what they did defensively either. They really did a good job of keeping Kennedy and Reeder at bay down low. Reeder got a late basket, a garbage basket that didn't matter. And because of that, they were able to get that separation. They were able to come out with a win. But it started on the defensive side of the ball. Without getting much from Farrar and Ross, who did score late, uh, Toby and, and Leon stepped up big time. And because of that, Alabama State gets out of here with a big win. Well, Darrell, I appreciate you stepping in today. I don't think I'd have made the whole broadcast without you being here. It's been a, it's been a rough few days and a, and a rough day today trying to get this game on the air. But I appreciate you stepping in. And, again, 2-0 against Alabama a and with you on the air. I enjoyed it. Go Hornets. 68-62, your final score for all the hardworking men and women of Alabama State University, the Alabama State University Department of Collegiate Athletics, and our athletic director, Ms. Jennifer Lynn Williams. And a special thank you to Walter Davis and his crew from the communications department here at Alabama State. One final time, Alabama State 68, Alabama a and 62. We'll talk to you again on Saturday from Alcorn as we face Alcorn State. 68-62, Alabama State wins. We'll talk to you again next week, and as always, go Hornets.